What I've come to learn after three recruiting seasons as a computer science major is that no two interviews are exactly the same, but there definitely are a number of commonalities. So I decided I'd make this video all about the things that you should know. Now it's not a complete list, but if you know all of the things that I talk about in this video and you know them well, hopefully you'll be able to do pretty well in your next set of interviews. And with that, let's get started. First thing we're going to talk about is data structures. Now, you've probably had people tell you before that knowing your data structures and your algorithms is super important before you head into an interview. I've said it before on this channel, and it's completely true. So we're going to knock those out right away, and then we're going to move on to some other stuff. So obviously there's a lot of different types of data structures, but here's a short list that I think are important to know before you head into an interview. Arrays, array lists or vectors, maps and hash maps, link lists and all the different variants of them, trees, binary search trees and AVLs, decks, queues, and stacks. In terms of actually knowing these data structures, there's a couple of different things that you should know off the top of your head. One of them is efficiency. So the basic things you should know is how to append, whether that be to the front, to the back, or somewhere in the middle. Same thing for moving. How do you remove from the front, the back, or the middle, or however that fits into whatever data structure we're working with. And then also access. How easy is it, or how quick is it, to access something within that. And then also, it's a good idea to know space complexity. I know my courses didn't really cover it, but you never know when they're gonna throw that question at you, so just be ready for it. You should also know when to use each data structure. It's one thing to know all the little facts about them, but if you don't actually know when to use a specific data structure, when you're given a problem to solve, you're not gonna know which one is the most applicable to that situation. Similarly, you should also know how to program and diagram in these things. So you wanna make sure you're practicing doing whiteboarding, doing some coding, and just working through diagrams so that you could show an interviewer that you actually know how to use that data structure and you don't just know some random efficiency facts and other things like that. Next up is algorithms. Now, when I talk about algorithms, I know there's a bunch of different things out there, but I'm primarily talking about graph search algorithms. You should know DFS or depth first search, BFS or breadth first search, UCS, which is uniform cost search, and then optionally, you also might want to know a greedy search and how to do a star search. It's probably more likely that you'll need to know efficiencies for data structures than you will for algorithms, but it's a good idea to know them nonetheless. And better yet, if you can actually understand why it's that thing instead of just memorizing, oh, it's O of n squared or something like that, that's going to be a lot better if you actually have to walk through something instead of just spouting off something off the top of your head. The next thing that's good to know about is some basics for dynamic programming. Now, depending where you are within your college career, it's possible that you've never even heard of dynamic programming, let alone worked with it, and that's perfectly understandable. I didn't even know about it until I was a sophomore in college, but it's definitely a good idea to try to know a little bit about it before you head into an interview. Knowing your data structures and algorithms is undoubtedly more important than knowing the basics of dynamic programming, and if I'm being completely honest, I've actually never had an interview in which I needed to use dynamic programming, but I felt like I should include this because I do know other people who have needed to use dynamic programming in their interviews, so we're going to include this in here as a brief section. It's a good thing to look at, but if you don't know a ton about it, it's probably not a big deal. The next thing we're going to talk about is resume experience. Now, I think it goes without saying that you should know what is on your resume and what everything on your resume is. So if you have a language on there and you don't actually remember what it does, that probably shouldn't be on your resume anymore. And likewise, if you worked on a project, you should know what that project was about and not be like, well, I worked on that three or four years ago and I don't really remember it. Now, there's a couple common questions that you should be ready to answer when it comes to your resume. And these might include, talk about one of your projects and what you did. Make sure you're giving a concise and effective summary and you're not just getting too in the weeds with it and not really giving an overview of what you actually did. What experience do you have working with technology or skill X? If it's listed somewhere on your resume, that implies you've actually done stuff with it. Make sure you can talk about what those things are. Talk about what you did in club or organization X. If you said you were in a certain club, talk about what your role was. Did you have a leadership role? What did you contribute? What did you learn, etc. And what was your favorite class you've taken in college? Not everyone's gonna ask this question, but I've definitely been asked it. It's always good to have an answer ready for this and just talk about what you learned in that class, why it was interesting, etc. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the importance of really knowing the company and the position that you're applying for. Now, this may sound obvious to a lot of you guys, but let me explain a situation that is not all that uncommon. You end up applying to a ton of different companies. You go on different sites like Glassdoor, Indeed, LinkedIn, etc., and you apply to over 50, over 100 companies. You probably don't really know everything about all those companies, and you don't need to. To apply, it's not a big deal. But if you actually get an interview with that company, before you sit down in that interview, even if you know your data structures, even if you know your algorithms, make sure you know what that company does, what they're about, what that role is, just all the basics about that company. 
Admittedly, in a lot of cases, the interviewer might not ask you any questions about what you know about the company or the position, but just imagine a situation in which they did. What made you interested in coming to this company and applying for this position? Uh, I saw it on a job website? It's probably not exactly what they're looking for, it's not going to blow them away, but if you can say, I really like what you're doing with these products and what you're doing in the industry with this, this, and this, that's going to look a lot better and be like, wow, this person is actually engaged with their company, they're interested in what we're doing, and they actually care, and they didn't just go click, apply, and send in their resume. A good rule of thumb that I like to follow is that I spend about a half hour researching a company. Now, in some cases that's plenty of time, in other cases a company does a lot of really cool stuff, and maybe you need to spend more than a half hour doing that research, but it's a good idea to also jot down some notes. Now, right before you go into the interview, you can reference those notes, get a refresher on what some of the key points are. This could be a really important thing for you to do. So make sure you're researching your companies and jotting down a couple notes. Next up is behavioral questions. Now, there are some people who really don't like behavioral questions, they'd rather do a technical, but I think probably most people prefer to do behavioral interviews over technical interviews. So we're just gonna talk about some of the basic questions you should be ready for, and what kind of answers you might wanna have ready. A few of the questions you might wanna be ready for would include, why do you want to work for company X? That's a big one. What's your biggest and what is your second biggest weakness? Sometimes they like to throw that at you because everyone has their first weakness ready. What is your biggest and second biggest strength? Discuss the time you were working in a group and there was an issue. How did you handle it? Why did you major in computer science or whatever your major is? Do you work more effectively in groups or by yourself? Obviously, this is not a complete list of questions. That would probably be hundreds of questions long if I was to come up with a complete list but these are some of the common ones that you might face. Now, it's a good idea to have answers ready, at least somewhat ready for all of these questions and some other similar questions. You're gonna look a lot better if someone asks you, why do you wanna work for company X and you have something with all your main points laid out that you can talk about concisely without rambling on. Once again, this is another place where you could take notes. I remember taking notes on behavioral questions that I thought I might face and writing up a response to it. Now, obviously in person, I'm not gonna say the exact same thing, but it gets me thinking about it. I'm like, well, if someone asked me this question, this is probably how I'd like to respond. And then before you go into the interview, you can just review some of those questions, get your mind thinking that way, and then hopefully if they ask you a question similar to it, you can knock it out of the park. The next topic we're gonna to talk about is technical questions. Now, this is a tricky one for me to cover because depending on what job you apply for, you're going to face different technical questions. As a result, I'll give you a couple different ideas of what you might face. However, you're really gonna to need to make sure for whatever job it is that you're studying the appropriate questions. A couple of these questions might include, describe the Agile framework, describe MVC or MVP, which would be Model View Controller and Model View Presenter, respectively. Uh, language specific questions, so if you claim to be an expert in C++, you should probably be ready for some C++ questions. Depending on your role, different things like networking or databases or mobile development. Whatever you're planning to go into, make sure you're ready for some questions specifically in that. When you're thinking of technical questions, a good way to think about it is what they could ask you in a phone interview. Now, if you were there in person, they could actually ask you to do whiteboarding or do coding live and stuff like that. But if you're just doing a phone interview, nothing face-to-face, -face, no screen share, things they could ask you to assess whether you actually know what's on your resume. So in this case, maybe they can't have me do some C++ coding for them. But if they can just ask me some basic questions about C++, they can get an idea for whether I really know my stuff or whether I'm just pretending to be an expert in C++. The next topic we're going to talk about is the questions that you can ask your interviewer. Now, not every interview is going to have this component, however, in a lot of cases, your interviewer is going to give you an opportunity to ask them questions about the job or the work or anything like that. Do not underestimate the importance of this part of the interview. I imagine there's some people out there who don't think that this is all that important. After all, they're just asking you if there's any questions you have, and if you don't, no harm in that. I would disagree. You should always have questions, even if you don't really have questions because it looks like you're not interested if you don't have any questions about what it's like to work there, if you're seriously considering working there. Some questions that you might ask would be, anything that you genuinely actually want to know that is both professional and not at all controversial? Why did you go to work for company X? What's a typical day look like for you? What is your favorite and least favorite part of the job? What's the work culture like? And what technologies do you use? And what specific work are you doing on the job? Speaking for myself, I will never go into an interview without having questions ready for the interviewer. Now, in a lot of cases, I actually really do wanna know some of those things that I just listed before, but even if I wasn't that curious about some of them, you still wanna ask some of those questions anyway. You wanna show that you're engaged and you wanna have good discussions with the person and kind of flip the script. You don't want it to just be them asking you questions. You wanna make it more of a conversation. Let's talk about what it's like if I come work with you at that job. 
Alright guys, if you want to see more videos about computer science and interviews, make sure you subscribe and leave a comment down below letting me know exactly what you'd like to see. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.